Welcome to SDH's coverage of everything going on in USL League One. It's time to get you through the match week and get you through a very, very busy seven days with Open Cup and that affecting the schedule and everything going forward. You've got some midweek games on the back end of the week that will follow, but we'll get into that coming up in just a little bit with all the news that need, that you need to know and the match of the week. But before we go forward, let's go backward and get you through the the, the previous seven days. Let's start off back on the third where it was a Carolina Derby. South beating North. Greenville traveled to Charlotte to knock off the Independence by the score of 3-1. And this was a common score line during the week. One knocks at Regal last Wednesday. And forward Madison had a goalless draw, as did the first match on Friday at City Stadium, Richmond and Union Omaha. The other match uh, score that was very, very popular in the last week happened twice. And it was uh, ones that finished up... Uh, uh, all of the coverage that we have. CHI Memorial Stadium with the regional rivals of Red Wolves and South Georgia Tormenta. Tormenta with the 2-0 win on the road in East Ridge. And our match of the week ties to some of the post to some of the awards for the month of April. From Fresno State, North Carolina FC, and Central Valley Fuego. Here's your highlights, courtesy of our friends at USL League One, ESPN Plus, and YouTube to get his team on this back and try to get Fuego FC back in the discussion for this 2023 season. Fuego FC in red going from right to left. Perez to the near post. Anderson headed out. And the shot comes in just over the bar. Well, the follow up by Mikey Maldonado, the captain, to the first post that Anderson gets a touch. Headed out and it falls for Maldonado, who just spoons it over the bar. Young back to Perez. Perez shifty as ever onto that weaker right foot. Wants to get back to the left. Finds Young with space. Young to the top of the box. The shot comes in. Oh, and it's saved by North and cleared away at the end by Casillas. Finding Young. Perez finding Young here. Young finds Cervania. The Puerto Rican, great shot, and North couldn't hold on to it, but Casillas cleaning up. Bijev hasn't been involved in the play so far. But it's been all North Carolina continuing that trend of form. Anderson goes down. Still Anderson. Now he can show some pace. Anderson looking for Rafa. Rafa, he's on the end of it, and Rafa scores. You cannot blink. Anderson, Rafa, 1-0 North Carolina. Anderson goes down, but he recovers here, and he uses that pace, and look at the little pass into the stride of Rafa Mensingen, and the dink pass North, as cool as you like, like the other side of the pillow, and it's 1-0 to North Carolina. Ball is set, Luis Perez. Gets this one up and over, oh, Perez. The Frenchman strikes. What a beautiful free kick. North Carolina take a 2-0 lead. Lined it up and a brilliant free kick. North didn't have a chance. It was struck with pace. It was struck with curve. And it's going to be caught in. A third red card in succession. Now there is the yellow card challenge on McLaughlin that he will soon receive from the referee. He gets the yellow card, puts his hand on the referee, and now the referee takes offense to that. Second yellow card for putting his hands on the referee. Carrera floating this one in. Hanson into the arms of Holiday. Somersault with the interception. Can they get a third? Adams. Adams cuts it back. Still Adams. Oh, and it's a save by North. 
Adam stayed on his feet. He could have gone down for the penalty. Played through, stayed on his feet here. The grab by the centre back and North with a foot save under pressure from Hanson. And that is the final whistle at the end of full time. North Carolina march into Fresno and beat Central Valley Fuego FC by two goals to nil. So North Carolina FC gets full points and that shoots them up the table. We'll get into the awards coming up in just a little bit. So the standings in traditionally one of the tightest leagues around and you're starting to see a little bit of separation. It is a North Carolina FC. They've only lost once in their first seven. They're at 16 points. Charlotte has played eight matches. They have 13. South Georgia Tormenta have played eight matches. They have 12 points as they've hit the, the win-loss alternate in their last five. A lot of folks at nine points, and here's where the traffic jam starts. Greenville Triumph, seven matches, nine points. Union Omaha with two wins. They have nine points as well. They have played one less match. Richmond Kickers with the same exact record going down to the 38th tiebreaker. It is Union Omaha currently over the Kickers, and that would be your top six. Just below the playoff bar, it is one Knox. They have eight points. Red Wolves at seven, and they have one more win than Ford. Madison, who've only played five matches so far this year. Hailstorm have been preoccupied with Open Cup. They've only played four matches. They have five points. Lex SC at six uh, matches played in four points, and they are ahead of Central Valley Fuego on uh, goal difference and in per game points average. So those two uh, total wins is your first tiebreaker. Then it goes to goal difference, and Lex SC is up by three in that category. So that gets you through all 12 of the teams in USL League One. News, Coach of the Month winner for uh, the month of April, John Bradford. No real surprise, considering the 13-point April has North Carolina FC off to their best start since 2011. Six matches, and it was a 13-point month. 4-0-1, 13 points, 1.49 fewer goals uh, conceded than expected, outscoring their opponents 10-4 picking up three points from losing positions. They defeated Omaha and Greenville and held Charlotte to a draw. Bradford's been named Coach of the Month at least once in each of his first three seasons at his time in Cary, selected as League One Coach of the Month by the USL League One Technical Committee. So congratulations to John Bradford. Player of the Month nominees presented by our friends at Konami eFootball. And you can vote on this one until Tuesday, May the 9th, 8.30, on all of the USL League One platforms. FanVoteUSLLeague1.com get 60% of the poll, 40% of the poll to the technical committee, and the award winner and complete voting results will be announced this upcoming Wednesday, May the 10th. Once again, your nominees, Wallex Anderson from North Carolina FC, Jackson Corey from Tormenta, Rafa Mensingen from North Carolina FC, Noe Meza from Union Omaha, Austin Pack from the Charlotte Independence. So that's what you're staring at when it comes to Player of the Month for the month of April. Billy Forbes has signed, and this is something to keep an eye on, Billy Forbes has signed with Central Valley Fuego. 84 combined goals and assists in his nine-year career, and it is for the remainder of the 23 season. Big pickup for Central Valley. Uh, collegiate career at Western Texas College in Lubbock Christian. Started in the NASL with San Antonio Scorpions and Rio OKC. Big pickup. Big, big, big pickup for Central Valley as they are looking for some offense after that title. Forbes joined San Antonio FC in 2017. Spent time in Phoenix, Austin, the Miami FC in Detroit City. 131 appearances, 30 goals, 18 assists. In 2022, he was loaned from Detroit City to CPL side Valor FC, 12 appearances, scoring twice and assisting once in Winnipeg on the international level uh, for his home nation, the Turks and, Caicos, uh, Turks and Caicos Islands. National team captain, becoming the country's all-time leading scorer at 12 goals and 8 assists in 24 appearances. Named to the CONCACAF Nations League League C, best 11 in March, scoring twice, assisting once in the Turks and Caicos' two victories in that window. So Billy Forbes, keep an eye on that with what he has been able to do with his pedigree 
Now he is in Fresno, California with Central Valley Fuego. We'll keep an eye on that going forward. Team of the Week in power rankings for Week 7, pushing through once again. It's uh, Noe Meza for Week 7 as Player of the Week. Your team going forward, Austin Pack from Charlotte, Nicolas Cardona from Chattanooga, Michael Hornsby from Richmond, Sean O'Hearn from One Knox, also Mitch Osman from Forward Madison. That gets you your back four. Cedro Martinez from Forward Madison joins Mensing and Luis Perez. And Yesen Vanderplum from One Knox. Your two forwards up top, Trevor Amon and Noe Meza. Your bench, Burnt Shipman from Forward Madison. Nathan Ani from Richmond. Manuel Madrid from Charlotte. Derek Gebhardt from Forward Madison. Luis Gild from Forward Omaha. Ropapa Mensa from Charlotte. And Emiliano Terzaghi, who either on the bench or in the starting 11, always seems to be a part of this discussion every single month when it comes to teams of the week uh, all the way across. Your power rankings for week seven as we get you ready for week number eight. North Carolina FC up one, which means Charlotte drops down one. Union Omaha's up one to three. Richmond up one to four. Ford Madison up two to five, which meant the Hailstorm dropped three to six. South Georgia Tormenta dropped to seven. Greenville stays at eight. Chattanooga up two to number nine. One knocks down one. Lex SC down one. Central Valley stays at 12. Once again, you can follow all the information that is going on in USL League One by being a part of their social media platforms on Twitter, on Facebook, and on Instagram. Now, let's get you into the schedule for the week that will be. And it is on Saturday, and it is on Tuesday. And next week, just so you know, there's action almost every single day next week. Tuesday, May 16, Wednesday, 17, Thursday, 18, Saturday, the 20th. So it'll be interesting covering everything in USL League One next week. So here we go. Saturday, four matches. 7 o'clock at Furman University, Greenville hosting Richmond. Big match up there. Early contender for match of the week. Toyota Stadium in Lexington at 7 o'clock. Lex SC hosts Charlotte Independence. 7 o'clock at Wake Mid, North Carolina hosting Forward Madison. 7 o'clock at Regal. It is One Knox hosting Hailstorm. And then on the quick turn, basically two days rest, One Knox hosting Chattanooga Tuesday, May 16th. We'll see how One Knox responds. Chattanooga, they've had time off. One Knox will be coming on two days rest. It'll be interesting to see what the lineup looks like for One Knox playing Saturday, Tuesday, even though both of them are at home. And then we got matches on a Wednesday and Thursday next week, heading into your uh, traditional Saturday, Sunday full slate as well. And then we get into uh, midweek games as well to, to finish up the month of May. So it's going to be a very, very busy month here with uh, USL. League One, if you are in market and can catch any of the matches on a weekly basis, please do because it is quality competition, one of the tightest leagues in uh, in this hemisphere, frankly. So if you can't, if you're in market and you can't, follow along on your local providers. And if for some reason you are out of market and still want to catch up with uh, the team of your choice, do so through ESPN+. Plus. They have every single match in USL League One available to you, however you do your streaming. So once again, busy, busy times in USL League One. There's player news. There's standings. It's starting to get cramped. Once again, it only took seven match weeks for that to happen. So not a surprise with everything going on in USL League One. After the top three, four through ten, only separated by a handful of points in a 12-team league. So for everybody here at uh, SDH, thanks for hanging out with us as we break down everything going on in USL League One. Enjoy the matches. Play it safe. And we'll catch up with you next time. There can be only one!